All right, so we're going to be opening up and disassembling this HP Envy X360 convertible PC model 15-AQ273CL. All right, we're going to be using a T5 or Torx 5 as well as a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. We're going to remove the rubber feet here. <clears throat> okay, I don't think there's anything under these feet, but it looks like they peeled them up. Yeah, no. Okay, so the customer worked on this earlier to replace the fan, and then after that, the computer wouldn't turn on, so let's see what's going on. We're going to remove the two PH1 or JS1 screws. You want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like this. On my desk in the pattern, I remove them, so we got those two. <clears throat> now we're going to switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver and remove those. Oops. All right, and let's go ahead and get all those screws out. Okay, and then we got the four others at the bottom here. They also put these screws in a little crooked, so I don't know. All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well helps you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living all right <clears throat> let's go ahead now and get this cover off usually we can kind of get underneath part of it and kind of pull it up but let's see let's see this part's stuck pretty strong <clears throat> so we are probably going to have to try with a suction cup so i'm going to use that i'm going to get in the side edge here and kind of help pull on it and it's actually holding really strong here so I guess let's go around to the front and see if we can pop it up this way wow these clips are actually really strong it doesn't want to come out anyway any way we pull on it ah my fingernail stuck in there <laughs> okay so most likely we want to go from the back here yep okay there we go <clears throat> Pulling up from there, it worked. You can see, we're gonna kind of wiggle this and it pops out. Their battery actually looks pretty bad. It's like bulged and inflated here. <clears throat> oh, they actually don't even have the battery connector connected. So hopefully that's a good thing. The one thing I'm <clears throat> worried about, it looks like they peeled this up and this is the LCD LVDS connector. Whenever you mess with that, you want to first disconnect the battery, <clears throat> open up the computer, and then you want to press and hold the power button for 15 seconds. All right, this will drain any residual power and will make it a lot safer to work on, greatly reduces the risk of damage. Um, again, if you're messing with the LCD LVDS connector, it's very important that you do this because if you don't, there's a very good chance that you're going to um, fry the motherboard backlight circuit okay <clears throat> excuse me my throat's all like Ugh. all right anyways now that we got that I'm gonna double check all the connections here okay they look okay I'm getting a call give me a second I'm gonna take that call and I'll be back all right I'm back so, oh god, what the heck? <clears throat> I guess you guys are going to have to live with my screwed up voice. <clears throat> okay, let's see. So we got the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Hopefully you guys can understand what I'm saying. I sound like a smoker or something right now. <clears throat> we got this connector here for the USB headphone jack power button and the volume buttons as well as the hard drive activity light okay got this LCD LVDS connector runs along here <clears throat> then you got the speaker connector fan connector CPU heatsink CPU soldered underneath here <clears throat> keyboard connector trackpad connector keyboard backlight connector you got this for another hard drive, but you will need a special adapter for that. There is a sp empty space here for the hard drive, it seems. <clears throat> okay. 
You got the battery connector here that the customer already pulled out. CMOS, BIOS, real-time clock, RTC battery, whatever you want to call that. Wireless card and the DC jack charge port connector under this plastic flap here. Okay, and that is removable, of course. Okay, we're going to plug the battery back in. Sorry, my voice. Oh, my goodness. Get this back in. Okay. Make sure you put it in evenly. You don't want to put it at an angle or anything. Okay, and then pinch the two, pinch the thing into, um, into place. Good, battery's in. Let's go ahead and see if it powers up right now. Carefully open it up. Okay, and then we're going to push the power button on the side here. And nothing happens. Let's plug it in. Did they? Oh, yeah, they did give me the charger that they have. So let me plug their charger in and see if anything changes. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Their charger's all coiled up, so it's kind of trying to untangle it. All right. Let's see here. That's not a good sign. Their charge light doesn't even come on. So you can see their charge light here doesn't even come on. Let's see if they're lucky. I'm going to try resetting the BIOS here. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop the battery out. We're going to pop this CMOS battery out. What you do is you just get a little tool. You push it inwards and then you pull it up. Okay. So just like this. Push it in, and then you pull it up. Oh, am I going to break this thing? Okay, there we go. Oops, you want to be careful with that. You don't want to drop that inside here. <clears throat> Next thing you want to do, you want to get two things, two metal pieces to touch both these metal parts together. So I'm just going to use two flathead screwdrivers here. And I'm going to touch these metal pins here and these here. And we're just going to touch that together. Okay. And we're going to hold that for about 15 seconds. All right, this drains the power from the CMOS BIOS chip, and then it causes it to just reset itself. So we'll hold it a few more seconds. Usually it resets like pretty quick, like a few couple seconds or so. But uh, I just hold it longer just to be safe to make sure. Okay. Next, we're going to open this thing up. And we're going to press and hold the power button as well. And hold that for a while. See if that changes anything either. There's like some... I don't know if you can see that on the bottom of the battery. There's one of those anime crying things with the two T-shaped eyes. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what caused that. Come on, focus on it. Can you see that? It even has like the little mouth in the, in the middle of it. Okay, well, we've held the power button long enough. Let's put this battery back in. Let's reconnect the battery. And see if we have any luck here. Okay, we'll plug the power cable in. Still no power, no no lights here. So <clears throat> I think they somehow fried the motherboard. Yeah, nothing's happening at all. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get another of my own HP chargers, and we'll see if there's any change, but I have a feeling they fried the motherboard. I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Got another HP charger. Let's go ahead and see if this does anything. Nothing. All right, well, looks like they must have fried something because nothing's happening. Yeah, I think they must have fried their motherboard. Anyways, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> We're going to put this thing back together. Actually, maybe I should leave it open because I think the customer is going to want their 
SSD out. Let me see. Do I see anything weird here? Oh, I forgot to show one more thing. The RAM. So there's this metal plate here. You can get underneath here. Pop this up. And here you can see two sticks of RAM. We're going to pop these two to the side. Okay. And there's actually only one stick, but there's two slots, of course. And this is PC4 2400T. So you can use any PC4 2400T RAM in here. So if you want, you can put two 16 gig sticks. Um, but yeah, they had a single 8 gig stick in here. All right, so we'll just put that back in at an angle. Click that back down. And we'll put this back on. Okay, just line it all up and then push that all in and that's pretty much it so to put this thing back of course it's pretty straightforward you just get the bottom cover part back in first okay make sure it's all lined up once you got that in work your way up over here okay you kind of have to align it get that all into place there we go and then just get all the screws back in and that's pretty much all there is to it hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did again please make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living but other than that that's all there is to it <clears throat> Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's get all these screws back in. Oop, the magnet's too strong. and then just get those rubber feet in and that's pretty much all there is to it thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one all right let's drop this bye